Hey everybody, this is Chris here with Daily Motor and today we've got the infotainment tour and demo on the 2022 Dodge Charger and its 8.4 inch touchscreen Uconnect 4C infotainment system. Before we get started, let's hop out, take a walk around this charger just so you all can see what we're working with today. So I know in the title of the video, it just says Dodge Charger, but this is quite a special and uncommon charger here. This is the 2022 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Wide Body Jailbreak Red Eye. No, I said that wrong. <laughs> this thing has 807 horsepower and it looks, in my opinion, fantastic here in indigo blue with these silver wheels and red badges. If you wanna learn more about this particular Dodge Charger, Make sure to check the links in the description for our full review, sound system test, and fuel economy test. We've had a ton of fun with this car this week, and I'm excited for you guys to see uh, everything that we've done with it. But if you clicked on this video, you're curious to learn about the infotainment system. So let's go ahead and hop in this thing and get started. We'll actually start out looking at the gauge cluster. We have quite a few different things that we can access here, and I want to also put a disclaimer we will be showing the srt dashboard as well as all the different performance pages and screens in the cluster so apologies if you're not here looking for uh use of any srt pages but i figure while we're here we might as well show them so we'll start here with the cluster we've got two physical gauges on either side they are red here and they say srt of course because we are in an srt hellcat We've got four little arrows over here on the side, uh, on the left-hand side that control the middle screen here between our two physical gauges. Quite a few different options here for things to display. We've got trip info. We've got fuel economy, which is hilarious. We've been averaging 11.6 MPG. Performance pages here. Many different things lap timers, all sorts of stuff here. Ooh, that's all alleged. <laughs> Vehicle info here, engine power. You can see the power gauge here while you're driving all the way up to 850 horsepower. Air fuel ratio, boost pressure, coolant temp, tire pressure. So guys, there are so many different things here on this cluster that you can go through. But I've just been leaving it here on the uh, speedometer because I like to have a digital speedo in here. It's nice to keep track of your speed with all of this power under your right foot to make sure you're not uh, breaking the law too badly. So that'll wrap it up there for the cluster. So let's move on to the actual 8.4 inch Uconnect 4C infotainment screen. You can see there's no real home screen here on this infotainment. We're really just have all of these different options here at the bottom and it defaults to our media tab, the furthest to the left. You can see in the background here, since we're in a Hellcat, our wallpaper is a Hellcat uh, behind our media source. So that's kind of neat. We'll go through all these tabs here and then we'll take a deeper dive into each of them after we talk about all of them. So on the far left here, media, one to the right climate, next to that controls for heated vented seats and mirror dimmings. One over from there are our Uconnect apps. Our SRT dashboard is next to that. That is gonna be unique to, of course, the SRT uh, chargers. Phone tab next to that, and on the end we have settings. So starting out here in media, I just have this set to FM radio. We are able to tune here down with a tune knob to the right. I'll show this in POV so you guys can all see. On the right-hand side, we have a tune knob. On the left-hand side, we have a volume knob. It's nice to see that Dodge still gives you the proper knobs, but not surprising considering that this interior has not received an update in quite a while. And actually, this car is going to be discontinued soon. So uh, I'm sure whatever newest iteration of the charger that they bring back uh, we'll see a um, updated interior. Other physical buttons down here include a mute button for your audio and a screen off button to just give you a black screen and also a shortcut to your SRT pages down here as well. We also have AM, FM, Sirius XM and a source select button here on the left hand side of our media tab. You can go down to Sirius XM and it works similarly Two knob is in close reach for the passenger, so if the passenger wants to change radio stations, they are able to do so. AM radio, of course, works the same. We've got presets here at the top, and you can tune here in the middle if you want to go to a uh, particular station. You're able to do that uh, same for 
um, FM radio as well. If you want to go to 95.5, whatever, you're able to do that. Audio settings here on the right-hand side of your media screen. Balance fade, equalizer, speed adjusted volume, and surround sound. You can toggle on and off. We do have a 19-speaker Harman Kardon sound system in this Dodge Charger. Not as good as we were expecting, but if you want to see a full review on that, make sure to check links in the description. Charlie did a full in-depth review on that system. Kind of strange here. We don't have a direct uh, shortcut to navigation. We do have this little map button, but I can't seem to s figure out how to actually use the map. It looks like it's just kind of a general map. I don't know that you can actually use any navigation function here but you do have that there on the right hand side. Let's move on to the climate tab. Turn the climate on here so we can actually uh, see what we're doing. And separate from our climate tab in the infotainment screen, we do have a physical climate control panel down below our volume knobs and such for defrost, temperature, and fan controls. However, if you wanna do anything else, you have to look to the infotainment for that. If you want to switch where the actual fan is blowing, you do that in the infotainment, as well as controls here for heated and cooled seats, and we'll get to that in a second. But we have options for AC, recirc, and if you do wanna adjust temperature, you are able to do that here in the infotainment screen. You can sync or unsync your temperatures over here on the right hand side and you can also turn it off with that button there other controls include heated vented and uh, heated steering wheel there and you also have a mirror dimmer toggle on and off in this screen and uh, settings will take you to the settings tab high and low functions for heated and vented seats one to the right there you connect apps this is really just shortcuts um, to a lot of different things. So if you don't want to go to the particular menu, you can go to Uconnect apps and it'll give you a shortcut to quite a few different options. This screen lags a little bit and it's honestly probably the laggiest screen in this entire infotainment. Otherwise it seems to react pretty quickly, but as you can see, you can get to things like audio settings in here. Um, and you can also go to like SRT mode from this screen. There are a number of different shortcuts here in the Uconnect app screen and, um, got two pages of those there next to that here is going to be unique to the srt cars our srt dashboard it's funny down here they couldn't quite fit dashboard so they had to abbreviate it dashboard <laughs> not quite dashboard so we'll go through the srt screen this is going to be the most in-depth screen in this entire infotainment there are a ton of options here as you can see mainly for drive mode so you've got track drive mode here you've got sport custom course you can set that one up and then auto that'll change all of your different drive settings let's go into custom here and I'll show you how you can um, toggle on different functions here for custom setup in your custom drive mode kind of a cool screen here you can toggle your power to the full 807 or the very calm 500 we do have the red key in this car so we're able to drive with the full 807 transmission settings here for track sport or street paddle shifters on or off you got your traction uh, settings here, street, sport, track, as well as settings for suspension and steering. And with this being custom mode, you can toggle these to whatever you want them to be. I like to have mine set up like this, full power, paddles on, transmission and sport, and then everything else in street for a nice, comfortable ride. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back here. You can also take a look at different race options here. You have line lock, which you activate by pressing over on the right-hand side. Launch control, which you can also activate by pressing the physical launch button down here by our volume and tune knob in between those. The chiller for max cooling when you're on the track. Enhanced intercoolers, I should say. Shift light, you can set uh, what, for each gear, what uh, uh, RPM you want the shift light to come on. And then you've also got race cool down here with all sorts of graphs and other things. And you also have a similar view if you go to, go back into auto here, and where do I wanna go now? Uh, do I wanna go into race options? No, I don't. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the main screen here. And you can go into what's called performance pages. That takes a second to load up. And you can see here we have a graph. It's almost like a mobile dyno. You can see here dyno mode, you can see how much power and torque your car is making at any given time. 
This just gives you a bunch of different gauges and, well, performance pages if you want to drive around and pretend that you're in a Fast and Furious movie. You're able to do so. This is kind of a cool one here. Power, gear, g-force, and air-fuel ratio all on the same screen. So that's kind of neat. One click on the SRT dashboard tab takes you back to the home screen. And that'll about do it for the SRT screen. Lots of cool in-depth customization here with this uh, charger. So kind of cool to see. Phone tab here, if you do have a phone connected, you're able to access all of your different options for a Bluetooth phone. Today we're gonna to use phone projection, so we'll show you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here on this infotainment screen, but otherwise these would be all of your options for a Bluetooth screen. Finally, settings here on the far right. Really just a general settings menu here. You can see we have our Hellcat here in the back as the wallpaper. Otherwise though, not too many different options. Um, we've got three different uh, pages. Just for very general settings, I'll let you guys look through these. Pretty general options there. Okay, cool, so let's go ahead and plug in our iPhone and see what Apple CarPlay looks like here on this Uconnect infotainment screen. Very simple pairing for Apple CarPlay. It doesn't prompt you with anything at all. You simply plug your phone in and boom, you're on to Apple CarPlay. This is one of the fastest reacting Apple CarPlay uh, projections I've ever seen. It does such a great job. I mean, look at the frame rate here. Uh, the refresh rate, I should say, when I'm scrolling through my apps. While we don't have the wide view here, I think that's okay, just because of how fast everything reacts. You're able to get through all three pages very quickly. Just four apps across, two apps down. We'll take a look here at Google Maps, and you can see that the refresh rate translates to apps as well, not just the main screen. Here is Spotify, reacts so quickly. And we'll take a look at Waze also. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm really quite impressed with the overall performance here of Apple CarPlay on this infotainment screen. Uconnect button here takes you back to your settings menu or wherever you were at last in your Uconnect screen. And really just an overall nice display here of Apple CarPlay. And it's worth mentioning also the uh, material of the screen, while it is slightly matte, I think it's a nice in-between of gloss and full matte like you get on a Toyota system. It uh, feels nice in the hands and uh, it does a good job of preventing glare. So let's take a look at Android Auto now. We're gonna unplug our iPhone and plug in our Android phone. So you all can see what Android Auto looks like here on this infotainment screen. All right, let's take a look here into Android Auto. We'll just have to unlock our phone here. And we can get started. Oh no, has it kicked me out? Nope, next, next. Okay, cool. Let's take a look here at how quickly Android Auto reacts to inputs. All right, it's actually one of the faster reacting uh, Android Auto displays and also the highest resolution. Pretty good looking uh, Android Auto here. Let's go into YouTube Music, scroll through. Pretty quick and smooth frame rate, not quite as smooth as Apple CarPlay, but that is pretty typical of just these systems in general. Just see some general sort of things here with Android Auto. Well, that'll just about wrap it up for us today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed watching. I hope this has been somewhat insightful for you. Overall, honestly, I'm quite pleased with this infotainment system. I really have minimal complaints. Other than that, you have some laggy inputs here when you're just in the Uconnect system going back and forth with the Uconnect apps and other screens. However, phone projection is done so well with this infotainment screen and just ease of operation that uh, I honestly really do like it and I don't really have any major complaints. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, again, if you wanna learn more about this Charger uh, SRT Hellcat jailbreak, make sure to check links in the description for our full review and other videos that we have filmed on this car. Well, that'll wrap it up for us today. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Chris here with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.